This message is brought to you by danmolerarchive.com, the number one place to search over 2,500 Dan Moeller messages in growing. Now, please enjoy this message. The gospel good? Oh my goodness, yeah. Let's just, uh, let's just pray and ask God to say today, He knows the room, right? He knows everybody. I don't know if you realize how intimately He knows you. Like He knows everybody. He knows where everybody's at. And the way I prepare my heart to, to speak, I don't necessarily look ahead of time. I just catch the heart of God in that moment, and I think my best preparation is just being with Him. But what I want to do is, like what I pray is, if they handed you a microphone, Lord, in the next couple minutes, you know the room. Like you know exactly what you would say. And that's what I want to say. So let's just pray, and I want you to open your heart and say, look, I'm here. Go ahead and speak to me, minister to me, encourage me, challenge me, but have your way in me. Would you do that in your heart when I pray? You open your heart and you yield yourself like clay to him so the great potter can come and begin to do what he's always wanted to do in us. So, Father, have your way today. There's so many things we could say. Such a short time, but so many things we could say. It would pass. People would say that might, you know, that was good. And, but we want to say what you would say. If you were holding a microphone, you know us personally. You know exactly what you would do this morning. And we ask you to have your way. And as your people, we say we are open for you to be a father unto us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Awesome. Okay. Well, my, my uh, Sunday thing's a little different in a sense sometimes because it is it is a shorter service. It's open services. We didn't care much about time. You gave me that liberty over and over. I didn't quite take advantage of it like I usually would. I don't know why. I just stopped when I stopped, and it seemed earlier than normal for me. But I think we said plenty on a Sunday morning. Man, I feel like it's a corporate celebration time. I love that love time you guys do. You really do it too like people go all over the place and hug each other and 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 I like that there's a corporate celebration you're looking around there's people kind of new to the faith there's people visiting there's people that have been walking with God so you got all that in the room but it's just neat because it's a corporate celebration and you look around the room and you realize man there's people believing what I'm pursuing there's there's people on the team there's people on page we're going after this thing right and I, I think there's just a lot of benefits to a Sunday morning gathering what we have to always make sure and this is what I honor about these guys because Susie just did did an amazing job of keeping vision in front of you and I, I, I'm sure she was doing it on purpose we haven't talked about it but I'm, I'm sure you guys do this all the time like one of the biggest traps of a local church and a local pastor is just turning inward and trying to have better church trying to do better services trying to be more attractive to the public trying to do things to get more people to come instead of keep vision in front of them to empower them to look more like Jesus in their everyday life because if we miss influence if we miss influencing others then we're just doing church instead of being her like this isn't church this is a meeting place I'm looking at her I'm looking at her you're the best he's got you're the roster of heaven come on he paid for you he paid to put his life inside of you his spirit his nature his purpose his will like it's a big deal guys it's not an Easter story it's a big deal the son of God was put into the womb of a woman by Holy Spirit that is a big deal like, this isn't history. The, the living God, the one that was and is and, and is always going to be, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that's coming on a horse with a sword out of his mouth, he said, Holy Spirit, put me in her. Oh! That's radical. That's God. He said, I'll go and I'll do it as a man. I'll become a man. I'll, I'll be born into the likeness of sinful flesh. But I ain't going to sin. I'm going to fulfill the law. I'm going to walk this out and model what they were created for. I'm going to pay a price to get them out of the lie and get them back into the truth and put my life inside of them so they can be born again. Don't you turn this, please, into blessing and take me to heaven and just please forgive me. No, no, no. Put your life inside of me. Put your ways inside of me. Change me from the inside. Yeah? I'm done. I'm just done with being frustrated and discouraged and disappointed and self-centered and self-focused and he said, she said, and well, I feel, well, I wouldn't if they didn't. Well, I'll come. I'm done with it. It doesn't produce life. It never has. It never will. And it's not who you or I were ever created to be. 
It's what we were born into through Adam, and it's all a lie, and it's the way that seemeth right to a man. And sometimes we have so much of a right to not be like him, but we're created for his image. Yeah. So I'm going to throw that right away. I don't, I don't want any right to not be like him. I don't want a justification for being the same. I don't want to make you so wrong that it makes me right that one day I find I was wrong. I'm just done letting people and what they don't see decide what I do see. Letting what people do or don't do decide who I am when people aren't Lord. I'm done letting things govern my life that aren't who he is. Come on, you be real with me this morning. We have let individuals decide our disposition, our hope for tomorrow, the way we feel and think and act. We have been molded by one another, by circumstances and by life. That's just face it and be humble this morning. Don't hide from me. We have been shaped by things that aren't the Lord. And at a very young age, you were nothing more than how you responded to how it all went down. And that's who you believed you were. What a rat race. And the insecurity and the heartache and the survival instinct. The cat in the corner thing. Oh. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. And some of us didn't come through that thing too well. And some of us that think we came through well, the only reason we did is because we turned into fighter instead of broken. So you either harden yourself and you make it, you're going to tough it through, or you get insecure, you carry in low, low in, uh, self-esteem, you, you might try to put on a face, but in the, in the deep dark of it all, you don't really feel good about yourself, and you believe the value of yourself is what people have projected. It happens to so many good people. And yet the blood of Jesus was shed for us. And he said through his cross, I know who you are. I know who you can be. And I know who you will be if you'll yield to me and live by faith. <laughs> and he honestly believes that dying and giving his life is worth us coming alive in him. Yeah. He is not interested in you praying a prayer. I'm going to say this in your church. He is not interested in you praying a prayer with the motive of just going to heaven. He is interested in putting heaven inside of you. And you becoming the people of God. Even back in the Old Testament, the reason he marked Israel, the reason he marked the Hebrew people, and they were the chosen people and the first fruit and the holy lump. That's not just because he said, oh, they're special and I know, understand covenants and all that. But he picked out a people and he poured himself over that people and through that people so that the nations of the world might know him through them. So that's Christianity. So now everybody's involved. The Israelites, the Gentiles. He's come for all men. And the middle wall is gone and we can all be one. And we can all live for the same reason. And you might not be a pastor and I might travel and speak and you might not be a missionary and they might be a missionary. You might have a heart burning for children and you might just flow in worship. That does not make us different. The diversity is where we find true unity. We all make up the full expression of him. But here's the truth about unity. We all wake up for the same reason. You don't wake up for your calling. You don't wake up for your ministry. You don't wake up to launch your ship. You wake up to be more like him. That's what makes us one. It's so simple that it's scary. We got churches on every street corner. Be honest, because we can't agree. And we're missing the simple truth that all we can easily all agree on is, come on, we all agree that it's about love. I don't think anybody's arguing over that. Sometimes we don't believe we can love. We think God's love. We don't realize we can love. But the truth is we can all wake up and pursue to love. And that's the body of Christ. And that's what makes us one. And if we miss becoming love, we miss the whole point of why he came. And we've learned how to do amazing church, exciting church, entertaining church, and failed to be her all along the way. Don't you let that happen in your life, especially when you hear a madman shouting out at you this morning. That's full throttle now. Thank you, Susie. 
Never intended to be calm, but I didn't intend to be a wild man. I just wanted to get up here and say what he would say. I'm just trusting that he would cry out to you like this because it's serious. He shed his blood, but he doesn't want to overwhelm you with the seriousness. He just wants your attention that, hey, man, let's live for what matters most. Let's not let things matter more that don't matter most. Let's not love and covet things that aren't going to be there in the end. Let's rise up and live by faith and get a grip and go after God. Let's, let's stop letting our heart be decided by things that won't matter in the end. Let's stop letting one person decide who I am and how I am if their name's not Jesus. Let's stop blaming my life on my spouse. Let's stop blaming my life on my work. Let's stop blaming my life on people. Let's die already and surrender and get filled with love and see the best in everyone and bring out the best in everyone because he's brought out the best in me. And let's see everybody through his eyes because they're the eyes of future and tomorrow and eternity. We've learned to cut people off. We've learned to hate people. We've learned to believe the worst about people. We've said if they didn't change by now, they'll never change. We've given up on so many things. And God's love has never failed. Maybe we don't know him like we sing. Love doesn't seek its own and takes no account and doesn't regard the wrong that it suffers, then why are we so busted up by each other? Because we haven't pursued to become love, we've pursued to be blessed. The goal of your instruction, 1 Timothy 1.5, the purpose of the commandment is not the blessing of the Lord, not the provision of the Lord, not heaven, life ever after. The goal of your instruction is love. Takes no account of the wrong done to it. Love doesn't say, I love you, do you love me? All you're saying is, I need you. All you're saying is, you bring something solid to my life, stable, don't pull out on me. I need you. You make my life happen. I don't know what I'd do without you. Don't ever hurt me. Don't ever, I love you. No, no, no. What you're saying is, you're saving me. You're fitting and, and fulfilling the need in my life. I love you. That's why people can say, I love you, and then move in actions of hate. That's why two people can sleep together at night and have a total blowout, bam, in the morning. Because it was never love. It's not love. It's need. It's people using each other to satisfy their need. It's not love. You're not going to talk me out of it. You're not going to trick me anymore. It's not love. It's not Hollywood. It's not starry-eyed. It's, oh, I love you. Stop. It's not love. It's need. Love never says, do you love me? It just says, I love you. I love you. That's what it says. You say, well, yeah, but ain't nobody making me a doormat. This is not a doormat. <laughs> this is him refusing to change his mind about you because he knows your better days are in front of you if you'll yield and surrender and believe. And he ain't giving up on you and he knows you can be so much more. And he ain't taking you personal in the moment because he loves you. And he ain't changing his mind. <laughs> and God could. <laughs> you like when I do that, don't you? <laughs> as soon as I did that, the Lord just, I thought, I looked for you. I said, there she is. And you're like, stop it. Ushy, gushy girl. <laughs> I love what Jesus is doing in y'all. It's just so good. See, this passion doesn't hurt you. Don't be hurt by it. Nobody's hurt by it. I can tell that in the room right now. But it has your attention. It's important. I didn't just come here. Blah. This is God crying out. I believe it with all my heart. He put his son in the womb of a woman. It freaks me out to this day. I think about it. 
I've been saved 23 years, preach all over the place. I think about God becoming flesh, putting himself inside the womb of a woman, sit there crockpot for nine months. <laughs> Just sitting in there. The Lord, nothing was made that wasn't made through him. He was from the beginning. And he's sitting in the womb of a woman so that he can set it straight. And you think I'm going to have a low esteem? You think I'm going to live in vanity and false stuff and put on false humility and talk myself down when he said, I want to sit you with me in heavenly places and put my life in you? You think I'm going to soft pedal this? Well, brother, we're not perfect. Stop it! You don't understand the gospel. You've been tricked into human experience and following one another. We're following him. We're following him. Don't you tell me we can't lay down our life? He said to. Don't tell me we don't tell me we can't follow him. He said to. He said, if any man, 1 John 2, says he abides in him, he'll walk even as he walked. He said that. That ain't my sermon. I ain't a heretic. He said that. Wonder if I'm just a believer and all of a sudden belief is heresy. Because we're so gripped by human experience. We're so sure that who we've been is who we are. And all of a sudden we've been tricked. And all of a sudden belief is heresy. Because we found our truth through one another instead of through him. Oh, that's straight strong stuff right there. I feel it. That's good. Oh. No, that's, that's good. See, this isn't arrogance. I'm not popping off. Wonder if I've tasted and seen he's good. Wonder if you don't live with me, but I do, and my conscience is actually clear. Wonder if I don't have secrets in my life like everybody believes you have to have. Wonder if I am clean in my own conscience and heart. Wonder if I go to bed and actually sleep at night. <laughs> and wake up in him and have the best view of you, honey, I've ever had in my life because he loves you don't even know her but man I know who she is people on the street say you can't say you love me you don't even know me oh I absolutely know you what do you mean you know me you're predestined from the beginning of time there's a time to be born and you're standing right in front of me your life alone is the expression of God's yes and God's will and whether you know him or not he's the reason you're here <laughs> And I know you have purpose. I know you have destiny. And I know you have the potential of walking in his image and his nature and becoming love. I know you better than you think. <laughs> That's why you don't throw nobody away. That's why nobody gets on your nerves because you got new nerves. And you ain't living first impression. Miserable, fallen, flesh, human wisdom. First impression. That's just a sign we don't know the Lord. See, we've been trained by a lie. We've been homeschooled in the wrong home our whole lives. From the time you had human awareness, you've been taught by false teaching. The world has trained every one of us. And every one of us in this room, whether you're saved or not, you might still have this dilemma. You lived from a self-centered, self-serving wellspring, and it created the person that you think you are. Because all the anger, and all the disappointment, and all the jealousy, and all the self-consciousness, and all the insecurity wasn't there in the beginning. It came through Adam. You got born into Adam. It came through man thinking for himself instead of thinking first for the kingdom of God. When you're seeking first the kingdom of God, you are not self-conscious. When you're seeking first the kingdom of God, you're not angry and frustrated and disappointed and discouraged. When you seek first the kingdom of God, you're following Jesus and you'll look like him. That sure beats, well, you don't know what I'm going through. See, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about what he went through. We've got tricked into the gospel is here to help us make it. No, the gospel's here to restore you back to what it was you were intended to be. You're not here for what God can do for you. You're here for how he can make you more like him. <laughs> We've been so tricked into beneficial messages and messages that serve me instead of change me. We've been so tricked into God just filling our baskets, our vats, and our barns that some of us are actually convinced that we have a right to be discouraged and some of us aren't even sure about God and we're not even sure where we stand because where's he been in my life? 
And when you have that thought towards God, there is no way you're having intimacy with Him. So there ain't no way you're getting pregnant by Him. So there ain't no way you're giving birth to who He is. Oh, I'm preaching in this house this morning. <laughs> See, I was holding back all weekend, I think. <laughs> no, I can't help it. We prayed. I asked. We, you opened your heart. It's your fault. It's your fault. Don't blame me. Don't even send me an email. It's your fault. You opened your heart. <laughs> Come on, you can tell I'm not mad at you. This doesn't feel condemning. I'm not here to correct you and spank you and scold you. I'm crying out from the rooftops who you are, who you're created to be. We do not have to live the same way it was. We don't have to stay the same. It's up to you as an individual. It's your heart. You, Stuart, your heart. Not somebody else's, your heart. You can't blame your life on anybody. You were going to answer in the end to how you believed in him, how you followed him, and how you trusted him. You will not be, you cannot stand before the Lord on that day and say, Oh, I'd have believed in you if it wasn't for my spouse. I mean, Lord, I prayed and prayed. Why didn't you change them? You won't even be able to think that. In the light of truth, you'll go, oops. I've been deceived. I've let something matter more that didn't matter most. Look, if you can't even think that on that day. If that sounds silly to even think you're going to think that, then why would you buy time with it now? If it ain't going to work then, why is it buying time now? Just because your friends agree? Because you gathered around two other people that understand your pain? That's a good way to never change. Did you ever notice hurting people surround themselves with people that hurt? And then they all talk. They call it support group. <laughs> they just talk about their story. It's sad. It's, it breaks my heart. Because they mean well and they think they're doing right. But they stay in touch with their pain more and more the more they stay there. The last thing you need is somebody to wrap their arm around you and just be sensitive. You need truth in your life to get you out of the lie, to get that break out of you. That break will never leave without the truth. See, if the truth makes you free and you're not free, that's the absence of truth, not the absence of ministry. You don't need prayer and oil and chanting. and You don't need as much deliverance as you think. You need to see, because if your eye is single, your whole body's flooded with light. It doesn't say unless, of course, your dad never said he loved you. Because mine didn't. And it just doesn't seem to matter, does it? And you know what? I ain't angry at my dad. I love him. Why? Because he didn't know. He had his own issues. And the dilemma is we're so needy because we don't know him that we need the people around us to be something that they're not. So now we have deficit. And then we pass the deficit on and say, well, I never really learned how to be a dad. Well, why don't you go to the Father and get some good lessons? Do I have to have had a loving Father in my life to receive the love of the Father? Why do we even think that makes sense? I don't have to have had a loving father. I'm not looking to my dad to find the love of God. I'm looking to the cross. I find the love of God through Jesus, not my dad. Now, if my dad was loving and manifested Jesus like God intended, that's a different story. He could point me to the father, but the dad wasn't there. So now do I have an eternal excuse for not receiving the love of God because dad wasn't there? I just made dad Lord. And now the blood isn't enough and the finished work doesn't matter because I got issues. It's called unbelief and lack of understanding. Is this too harsh? You okay? Good. I'm looking to you, man. I'm looking for help and support. I can talk to you like that because my dad was alcoholic and never said I love you. You said, well, you don't know. I've been touched wrong. wonder if I was. See? Exchanging our horror stories is never going to find truth. See, the reason people hold on to their horror stories and, and use them is because the only place they found identity, whether good or bad, it's their story. It's the only place they find any sense of themselves. But your story isn't who you are. 
Uncle Johnny touching you wrong in a dark place and the way you cried and shook. It's not that God just forsook you and, and let it all happen and da 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 da. No, it's sin. It's twisted up people. It's perversion. It's emptiness and it's trying to reproduce itself on you and wipe out more heritage and more generations. At some point, you've got to look up and say, man, I am not a product of Uncle Johnny's deficit. I'm a product of the living God and what you've done, and I'm going to let your life come inside of me, and I refuse to believe yesterday. We sang it. I am not my past. What does it matter what happened to me 25, 30, 40 years ago? I'm 57 years old, and the Spirit of God is inside of me. Well, brother, you don't know what it was like when I was growing up. I'm not talking about you growing up. I'm talking about you right now. What are you going to do with Jesus right now? Because he will get you past that season when you were growing up. Come on, let that be an indicator. You're 45 and you're saying you don't know what it was like when I was growing up. Ah! Well, brother, people just need time. They need ministry. They need delivered. Stop! We need to see truth and believe truth. Truth makes you free. If there's the absence of freedom, there's the absence of truth. You don't need all this ministry. You need to separate yourself from every lie. The weapon of your warfare, it's mighty in the breaking down of strongholds. It's taking every thought captive that rises above the knowledge of God, bringing it into obedience and holding it captive according to Christ. I read that book. It's, this is life-changing. But if you're going to read it, oh, please do yourself a favor. Believe it. And say, this is so. If God said he breathed into dirt and a man stood up, it happened just like that. Praise God. And you keep reading. Yep, yep, yep. Whoop, yep. So then when you get to the point where he loves you, he loves you. It ain't, well, I can't believe he loves me. Stop, he loves you. Well, I hope I'm forgiven. You are forgiven. If you care, you're forgiven. People come to me crying. People come to you crying. They tell their stuff. I need to confess to you. They come to you. They start breaking up crying. I'm like, man, I'm so excited to see what the gospel's doing inside of you. She just did it on a low level this morning. She just crying out her heart. She said, I just want so much God. And I just, she starts crying. And she said, and she said I'm, so, I'm just tired of praying. I said, honey, you're praying from where you think everything is wrong. You've marked yourself for what's missing, and you take your negative to God all the time. So when you leave your prayer time, you're just consciously aware of what's wrong with you, and you don't even see how much God is doing in your heart and how alive you are, and you're hungrier than ever before, and you're not the same person you were a year ago. She went, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So I said, I said, instead of bringing up all your neighbors, God, you need to change my heart. God, you need to work in my heart. You got to take this whole wretched heart. God, please. I mean, Dan said he pulled it out and put it in, but it still feels like the same. You got to do it, God. I didn't... No, 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 no. Instead of all that, watch, waking up in the morning. Father, thank you for what you're doing in me. God, I thank you you're forming me and your son. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you. Thanks for loving me. Thank you, God, when you look at me, you smile and you see righteousness and you see the finished work of your son, Jesus. And then you stand up out of bed and ain't nobody looking and you say, I just received your love this morning. Today is going to be amazing because you empower me. You're doing a work in my heart. I care about things in you that I hadn't even thought about before. There's things that are moving in my heart that were never moving before. I'm convicted like never before. Man, I'm excited growing up in you. Yay. You ought to be crying, girl. That is so exciting. Because that's where she is. You got somebody going, I need to talk to you. I've been saved for nine months and I figured I would never go back. And I just. And I, who's ever seen that? Almost always, verbatim. It's not religious, it's not rhetorical. Almost always go, oh my goodness. I don't hear what they said they did and go, oh my goodness. You did what? You can't do that. You're a Christian. That's a hypocrite. You're coming to... Well, I don't even want to see you raise your hands in church during worship until you get this thing straight. <laughs> that counsel's everywhere. They're crying. They're crying their eyes out, man. Their heart is rolling out if you could see. And you look at them and you say, Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to see how the gospel's purifying you and changing your heart. And they go... They usually go... They think it's a cynical joke or something, a cruel joke. They're like, purifying my heart. Didn't you hear what I just said I did? See, you see what it teaches us? We always believe we are what we did, and we don't believe we are what he did. 
So now we're always trying harder because we care, but we're sure we're always failing, so our heart's always in question. So instead of living redeemed, we live condemned. I'm bringing it in your church. I feel it. I can tell when it's clear. I can tell when people are wide open. Thank you for hearing the straightness of what I'm saying. I can tell it's a corporate hearing in the room. I'm not saying every single person. But even if you're not trying to hear, you're hearing. But I can hear a receptivity in the room. I can hear young people hearing, listening, being challenged. It's exciting to me what I'm perceiving right now. You say... I'm so glad to see And they say, pure heart, did you hear what I just said I did? Oh, yeah, honey. I heard what you said you did. We'll talk about it in a minute. But you know what? I see who you are. And I see who you're becoming. And the biggest trap in your life, if you start identifying yourself with what you did, you'll miss who you are through what he did. And you'll get into works because your heart's pure. You'll feel like you're failing because your heart's pure. And you'll get condemned and misguided in how you respond because your heart's pure. Because if your heart wasn't pure, you would not care at all. You can't even, the devil can't even trick somebody into condemnation if they're not alive inside. And if their conscience isn't working. Can't even trick them into condemnation. People that are living condemned, if there's any upside, it's wow, they got something to work with on the inside. Satan's just misguiding it, but they're alive more than they realize. You couldn't possibly condemn somebody that didn't care. Do you know how many good-hearted people cried themselves to sleep, feeling bad for their lives, waking up feeling no hope because they can't change, and they've marked themselves for their sin instead of for potential. So they don't commune with Holy Spirit thanking Him for help. They hang their head because all they're aware of is how bad they've been. <clears throat> what a lie. And we need pastors and leaders and people to begin to understand this like never before. To go ahead and rescue people and get them out of the darkness into the light. Get them out of the lie and get them into the truth. You can be your own best friend. And you can live in this kind of mercy and you can live in this kind of grace because it's what will empower you to change. And that thing you hung your head over, in a short time from now you'll look back and wonder why it was even tempting. Oh, I promise. You'll get so changed, you'll look back and wonder where you were even pulled. You'll want, you won't even be able to relate. I was just telling these guys how I used to be to my wife. And people say, well, I can't even picture you like that. It's because I'm born again. But I was talking in detail and how bad it was. And I look back at that and I can't even relate to it, but I can remember it. But it is so not me. And I don't feel one bit bad about it. Why? Because I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about that guy that died. It's not me. I promise you it's not me. Time will tell you that. Heaven will reveal that one day. I've been made new. <laughs> I ain't the guy that hurt that woman called my wife. I'm the guy that has loved her for the last 23 years. That's what heaven will remember. Heaven's not even going to mention those 13 years of hell. It's in the sea of forgetfulness. You know what heaven's going to remember? 23 years of redemption and love. Not one word I said to her derogatory will come before the throne. It's all in the sea of forgiveness. Why? Because I didn't just ask God to forgive me. I died. And I gave my life and he came inside of me. I didn't pray a prayer. I promise you, when I got saved on that night, I didn't pray a prayer to go to heaven. It was the last thing on my mind. I wanted to become the man he intended and I want to change. I wasn't thinking, oh, I got to go to heaven in case I leave work and hit a tree and die. I better get to heaven. I got to pray. The last thing on my mind was getting to heaven. I wanted to become the man that he created me to be. And now in time I realized what I was really wanting is heaven to come back into me. Because I felt like I was living so far from who he was. And even though I knew about him from a whole life of church attendance, I didn't know him. And then I read in my Bible that eternal life is knowing him, not praying a prayer to go to heaven. Eternal life is relational. Eternal life is being one with the eternal one. Seeing yourself the way he sees you. Whew. And then looking through those eyes and seeing everybody the same. Sounds like freedom to me. 
think I'm going to hang out here. I think I'm going to stay this way. Maybe get a little worse because I might know him a little more if you ever bump into me again. <laughs> it's our goal. It's the goal of our instruction. Love. People, if we miss becoming love, we miss the whole point of why he came. Some of us need to hear this and we, we're so ingrained with the gospel we've preached that when we hear it, it's so different than what we train by and grew up with. Like, watch this. The gospel is not fulfilled and paid in full when a man prays a prayer to go to heaven. The gospel fulfilled and paid in full when his nature is restored back to love. Praying a prayer to go to heaven is a starting point to get his life inside of you. The goal is is waking up for his love and for his image. The goal is being the body of Christ, walking and living by the Spirit. So there's a glory of his inheritance in the saints. Not your inheritance, his inheritance. It's the hope of his calling, not your calling, his calling. It's the exceeding greatness of his power, not your power, his power. Yeah? Whew. <laughs> Ain't that something? Guys, we can live this way. Don't you think it's impossible? And don't you count yourself out and say, well, I don't see myself. I don't know how I'm supposed to. No, no, no. You take the conviction of these words. You get along with God the first chance you get. I'm not a big order call guy. I think we do so many order calls that we miss intimacy sometimes with God. I'll do an order call if he tells me to. But they're a lot more rare in my heart than, than just doing what I'm doing now. The first chance you get, you talk to him face to face. And what that means is you just believe he's listening and he's there. You say, well, that never feels real. I ain't talking about living by feelings. I ain't talking about selling cheap and backing out because it don't seem like he's there. I'm talking about you believing like a child that he's right there. And thanking him for loving you and thanking him that his desire is good towards you and that you're not a failure and you're not a mistake waiting to happen. That your life is actually lovable and redeemable. And that's not false humility. That's what the cross is saying. It's not vanity and pride either. See, the false humility is, well, you know, I'm just human and you know God, it's amazing he even works with me. Stop that. He put his life inside of you. Let's get over that language that always talks us down thinking we're lifting him up. He's not pleased with that language. It robs us every time. It is not humility. It's false humility. It's actually an expression that you don't understand the gospel or the word of God. Man, you're talking frank. Yep, I am. I'm sure I see this on this one. I've watched us for 23 years and I've watched good people, well-meaning people, good intended people get deceived by a lack of understanding. I'm not talking to a room of hypocrites. I'm talking to his church. I'm not talking to a whole room of backsliders. I'm talking to people that care the best they understand. So in all you're getting, get more understanding. I got a great audience in front of me. And I just believe we're heaven's choice. And that isn't motivational speaking. So I guess I'm crying out for you to believe about you what I believe. I don't know if you understand this. It's why I fly to the places I fly. I don't fly here for an honorarium. This isn't a way of living for me. If I flew here for an honorarium, I'd have picked out a bigger church. <laughs> I'd have took the pastor that said he has 4,000 people. I picked up Susie's. And something in my heart said, go. And I didn't say, how big's your church? And I didn't say, you have to take an offering at every service. I told him, it's the last reason I'm here. If you don't take a love offering, I won't blink. I'm not here for that. I'm here because I believe what I'm telling you and I believe it's for you.
There's a such thing as that on the earth, people. There isn't a catch to everything. Just because we've been touched wrong so many times doesn't mean there's nothing pure around. Don't get jaded. Don't get hard in your heart. Don't you touch so wrong that everybody's wrong. I have some friends as policemen, their biggest challenge is seeing humanity apart from their occupation, and they tend to believe that everybody has something up their sleeve because they're around the worst all the time. Yeah. Don't you believe that about people? Don't you sit and be found in your presumption saying, well, it can't be that. There's got to be something to it. There's got to be a catch. That just means your heart has been tragically fashioned by life instead of the giver of it. Don't be wise in your own opinion. Don't be quick to shoot out. That's the, that's the dangerous side of social media. Church, be careful with social media. It's an opinion platform. And very little is accomplished on social media except people are finding a false sense and moment of identity because they get to voice their opinion. Be careful. Not a whole lot is accomplished in that arena. Paul said, don't be wise in your own opinion. And then we all rush to opinionated platform. John says, slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen. We're ticked off, got a whole lot to say, and don't want to hear it. <laughs> that is not an accident. Total opposite. We've been trained by a lie. You heard your whole life. Well, that'd be great, sir, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. I'd hate to see you hurt if it doesn't happen. That self-centered self-preservation. That phrase is designed to protect you, yourself. The Bible says, get your hopes sky high. That faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 6, that hope is the anchor of your soul passing through the veil into his presence. And we grew up, don't get your hope up. This book says, get your hope up. We grew up hearing, hey man, what you see is what you get. And this book says, don't you ever live by what you see. What you see is subject to change and the things unseen are eternal. It's not a mistake that you grew up hearing, the, well, what you don't know won't hurt you. This word says, what you don't know is destroying you. And in all you're getting, get understanding. And yet this language taught us homeschooled us in the wrong home our whole lives is trying to deceive us and get us passive and laid back what you don't know won't hurt you stay in ignorance you don't need to know man I started seeing these things it turned me into a wild man I was, I'm done being deceived and played by the devil I'm not for sale I've been bought with a price so all of a sudden all these scriptures aren't churchy anymore they ain't Sunday morning, amen, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> nope, not for me, friend. These things are real. I want them in my life. I want them in my heart. And when I look through my eyes, I want to hold myself accountable to be sure that I see what he's seeing when I look at you. And if all I see is your weakness, I ain't looking through his eyes. But if I see your potential and your purpose, no matter how a mess you think you are, now I know I'm in the right place. Are you with me? I'm done. I am, man. I'm on time. I feel like I need a medal or something. I've done so good in your church, you have no idea. I blow everything up everywhere I go. I mess up schedule, time. I mess up everything. I've done so good in your church. I need a medal. A medal. I said plenty. You heard what I said. I could tell you were hearing. Even if you didn't want to hear, it's too simple. I don't talk in riddles. Even if you came in here with an angry heart and you're trying to hold on to your right to be angry, come on, you're the one that's deceiving yourself because anger doesn't produce life. So it can't be the Lord. It's the most self-centered expression. It's so silly. Well, that's why I ain't pointing out who's angry. Because <laughs> I'm not here to shame you, but I'm telling you, it's silly. And look in your heart and say, what am I doing, duh? 
Why am I trying not to hear this man to hold on to the right that I'm carrying? I'm talking to a gentleman in this room. Justifying yourself not hearing me because of your issue. But your issue is creating something in you that's not producing life and it's costing others their value in your eyes. So why not let that die? Don't stand before Jesus and find that that was a mistake. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I know you're here because I saw you. That's why I'm looking up. I already saw you and I saw you and God spoke it to me right away, but he's not here to shame you. I wouldn't point you out. But I promise you he's talking to you and he's fathering you. Can we pray? You guys want to live this way? Let me ask you this. Maybe this is a better question. Who believes this is possible to live this way? By the Spirit of God. By the Holy Spirit of God. Good. Then let's open our hearts to Him and let's invite Him into our personal hearts and lives like never before. And let's not walk out of here and try to apply the sermon you heard. Let's walk out of here in fellowship with God and believe His grace is going to help us become these things as we walk out our lives. See, the truth is you come here, but you live there. Your mission field. You're all missionaries. You're all ministers. You all are to walk in the light as he's in the light. Anything that comes against the light shining through your life is an enemy. Not people, mentalities, perspectives, reasons, justifications. Anything, the strategy of the devil is to come at your life in a sneaky way to quench the light because then you go to church but live without influence. You go to church and you live without impact. You go to church but it doesn't matter because you can't be fruitful because there's no light. I'm just telling you, it's the strategy of hell. The strategy of hell is to get you to get involved with the things of God without walking in the light of God. And let what you do for him take the place of knowing him when knowing him is eternal life. Whew. That's really good. I feel it. We're done. I'm praying. Are you guys going to pray because it's 12 o'clock? I feel so good about this. <laughs> Kids are going to get out on time. Teachers aren't going to be exasperated. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's an amazing day. Woo! And then I'm going to get on an airplane. And somebody's going to seatbelt right beside me. And then they're going to make the biggest mistake of their life. They're going to look and say, how are you doing? And I'm like a pool string play doll. <laughs> and then you know what's going to happen? I'll get a word or insight or an impression. And then I'll say, man, what's going on? What? What happened in your family three years ago? Nothing. It hasn't been right since. What do you, how do you, it's okay. It's all good. It's God. I'm not psychic. <laughs> it's the Lord. <sighs> and then the fear of the Lord will come on them. And then you talk to them and you pray with them and he touches them. And I've seen it a lot. Why? Because I didn't get on the plane with issues. I didn't get on the plane frustrated. I didn't get on the plane mad at the guy that pushed in front of me to go to the same place so he could maybe get his bag in before me. I just don't let any of that matter. I'm done selling cheap when I've been bought at such a price. And if I'm distracted by all that other stuff, I probably got little discernment of the person beside me I'm wondering why he's taking so much room. Now I'm two minutes late. <laughs> We're praying, guys. It's your fault. I feel you drawling on me now. So. <laughs> you know, Adam said, it was the woman you gave me. It was the people, Lord. I would have been done. He's just so hungry. Father, we just thank you for this morning, inspiring us, encouraging us, crying out to us. 
I pray that every man's heart, every woman's heart, every child's heart can take it and, and harbor it and hold it till it becomes life. Holy Spirit, I ask you to bring grace into our individual hearts. And by doing that, make us an army. Make us of one faith, one mind, waking up in Augusta, somewhere and wherever we're from around this area, waking up to be more like you. Let the unity of the body of Christ be seen in this hour like we've never known it. I'm going back to PA, guys, and I'm going to wake up tomorrow, and God willing, and if he don't come back and get us through the night, but I'm going to wake up, and, and, and I'm going to pursue to be more like him. You're down here in Augusta waking up, pursuing to be more like him. Here we are states away, and we're living as one. And all of a sudden, we have impact, and all of a sudden, the earth is filled with his glory. Father, let it be the body of Christ in this hour. Let our hearts not be content in anything less. Let us be hungry and let us burn for these truths and let us walk in love like you love and like you paid for. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor.